This is tutorial number three in the Nexion display series. In this tutorial I'm going to go over timers. I had some difficulty finding any documentation on timers. It's, it's not a difficult topic, but since I had trouble finding information on it, I thought maybe a tutorial would help others. In this one I'm not going to hook up an actual display. We're just going to use the debug tool to display what's going on. We're going to start a new project. I would start it in a new folder. I'm going to use an enhanced display in case later on I do want to upload it. I only have a couple displays in inventory right now and this is one of them. We're going to go ahead and put a couple things on the screen so that we can manipulate them with the timer. So we have a gauge and a progress bar. The progress bar is kind of strange. It always starts at 50% value. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for right now. And I'm going to add a text box over here so we can display our timer or our counter. We'll have to add a font to this. And if you saw my last video, I now have a fonts folder and I keep things in it. That's easier than setting one up every time. And now the timer. This is where I thought that in order to use a timer you had to tie it to an individual device. But you don't do that. You just click on the, on the timer function over here and it adds this down here. And what it does is based upon what you have set over here, this is every 400 milliseconds. We're going to change it to every second. So that's 1000 milliseconds. And What it's going to do is it's just going to execute code every 1000 milliseconds. And we're going to go ahead and have it make this progress bar increment. And you do that by selecting the device itself and the value. And we're just going to add it, add one to that same value. Now we do a compile. And it passed. Now we'll go to debug. And you can see it. It's going to increment every second. And we can do the same thing with the uh, gauge down there. In order to display the data in this box, though, we have to convert it. So you use a conversion function. And then you put the source, the data that you want. In this case, we're going to go ahead and get the gauge. Since the gauge is going to start at 0, that's going to be our real counter. This one up here is starting at 50. So I want to get the 0. And then we have to put where we're putting it. And we're going to put it into the text of this right here. And this is called TO, and it's TXT is the variable. So go back to the timer. And then if you put a zero at the end, it it takes care of a lot of the work for you. I'll show you what that what I mean by that later. But just trust me, I guess, at this point. We're going to compile. and this is just our counter. And you can see that this is moving and this is moving. And this will just keep on counting. I'm going to go ahead and stop this again and we'll speed it up so it goes faster. On the timer we can change our variable. 
We'll change it to 100, so it's a tenth of a second. Now you can see it goes much, much faster. And then if you look down here, when this hits the end here, we'll start getting errors because we've gone too far. But I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1 so you can see what happens. it locks that in only one digit spot so that's actually 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and when you get to 100 now it's 100 it's going to sit at 1 until we get to 2 so if I change this to 2 now when we get to 100 it should say 10 The nice part about that is if you do, if you notice there was a zero on the front. I'll go ahead and restart this again. If you watch at the beginning, it's going to say zero one instead of just one. And now when it goes up to a hundred, it'll have it'll look like ten and eleven again. And that can come in handy sometimes if you need that but I prefer to just leave it at zero and then it auto adjusts to the number of characters that it wants to display. So the only thing a timer does when you place it there is it just fires code every however often you have this variable set to over here. And that's all a timer does. You can control any feature or multiple features with one timer. I want to keep these videos to less than 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop at this point. In my next video I'm going to pick up from this point and I'm going to go over some if-then statements and some looping statements. So I hope this tutorial helps. Consider giving me a thumbs up if you like the video and also consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell. Thanks for watching.